Dr. Michio Kaku is a theoretical physicist, best-selling author, and the host of Sci-Fi Science on the Science Channel. Doctor, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning, man. The president is saying basically this. Look, times are tough. There's a nasty recession out there. There's bloating at NASA. There's room to cut money here. Constellation is one good place. I know you agree with the assessment that there's room for cuts. You don't necessarily agree with the process. Well, we need a leaner and meaner NASA. To put anything into outer space costs $10,000 a pound. That's your weight in gold. And in fact, to put an astronaut on the space shuttle costs $65 million per astronaut. So we all agree we got to bring down costs. But do we lop off an arm and a leg in the process, or do we try to slim down and get more vigorous and innovative? For 50 years or so, this country has been the leader in manned spaceflight. Now, as a result of the president's plan, do you think it's a necessary necessary conclusion that we will no longer be the leader. Are we going to be second or third in that program? We're just going to have to get used to the fact that we're going to be depending upon the Russians for access to outer space and the Chinese have announced that they're going to go to the moon by 2020 or shortly afterwards. We're going to just going to have to get used to the fact that we're not going to be dominating the manned space when program. When you say get used to it, do you see any problems with hitching rides with the Russians or the Chinese or by turning this over to private industry? In the long term, no. I don't see any problems at all. However, there's a learning curve. The transition is going to be very abrupt. We're going to go cold turkey. Immediately, 4,600 jobs are on the line of the space shuttle. Nine billion dollars were spent on the Constellation and Ares program, all down the drain. And private enterprise may not yet be ready to pick up the slack. But when you when you hear the the White House talk about it, they say, "Look, we are now we are not going to stop investing in cutting edge technology, things like robotics, the things that the space program has been known for over the past 50 or 60 years." Are you in agreement with that? Will we still be investing in technology? We will. However, I think we should be even more radical. Chemical rockets are simply too expensive to put things into outer space. We should look at microwave laser systems where we have ground-based lasers uh, energizing water as a propellant, shooting the payload into outer space without the fuel. Let me ask you the, the emotional side of this, okay? I mean, the dream side of this. When I was a kid, um, I would lay awake at night. The Apollo program was in full swing. I would dream of being an astronaut or, or astronaut or, or going into science, reaching for outer space. What do you think this is going to do to the dream and the inspiration for millions of young people in the next generation? Is it going to damage that just to save money? It will definitely dim the dream. Now, I'm a scientist. We like robotic missions to Mars, beyond the Hubble Space Telescope, all done without any astronauts at all. But young scientists in the making who are 10 to 15 years old who get energized and, and see that inspiration, we're not going to have that in the future. You're worried about that. I'm worried about that. Dr. Kaku, thank you very much. I appreciate it.